All right, so um, we are next week, next week. So today we are starting into our inequalities unit and we're really just trying to become familiar with inequalities. What, what is happening in an inequality? What does it mean? What are my signs? Okay, my important keywords. This is so important that you can recognize this keyword means this sign, okay? So the sign always points, okay, whichever way it's pointing to the left, that's what makes it either less than or greater than. So on your first one, do, does everybody see how it's pointing or it's closed off towards the left? Do you all see that? So that means that it's a less than sign because it's closed off towards the left. All right, less than and fewer than are your key words. All right, now greater than we see is open towards the left. All right, and we express it greater than and more than. Now we have less than or equal to. So what tells me that it could be equal to is the line underneath the symbol, okay? That line means that it can also be equal to. Now, you have two phrases here that you're going to need to become familiar with for less than or equal to. One of them is at most, okay? So I'm going to give you a scenario. What if I said that, there, that you can fit at most 12 cookies in the cookie jar, okay? What would be some numbers of cookies, some amounts of cookies that could fit into the cookie jar? 11, 5, 7, can 15 cookies fit? No, because at most means that that number is the most possible. So all the acceptable solutions or values have to be less than that. Same thing with no more than. If I said you could be no more than 12 years old to get your, your free kid's meal, at the whatever. Who, who gives free kids meals still? Uh, Moe's? I think they do Kids Eat Free Tuesdays. Okay. All right. So if I said you could be no more than 12 years old, what are some acceptable ages? 10. Ten. Not 12. Well, I guess 12 would count. 7. Okay. What about 14? Can you be 14? No. Nope. Okay. Greater than or equal to? There's two key phrases here that you're going to need to be familiar with, okay? If I said you have to be at least 16 years old to drive a car by yourself, what are some acceptable ages? 19, 25, 100. At some point, maybe if you're 100, I don't know if you should be driving a car either. Maybe there's a, there's a limit. I don't know, okay? <clears throat> All right, so at least means that that is the lowest acceptable value. All the other acceptable values are more than that or greater than or equal to. All right, and then same thing with no less than. All right, so I'm gonna give you some real world scenarios here. And when I'm writing my own inequality, I always want to start with the variable, okay? The variable means all of the acceptable solutions that would make the inequality true. All right, so it says at least three students from our school are in a chess tournament. All right, are y'all okay if I use S for students? Okay, so if it's at least three students, that means that the acceptable number of students is greater than or equal to three. All right, because at least three students from our school went. So I'm showing that the value for S would need to be greater than or equal to three. All right, so it could be three, could be four, could be five. Let's look at the next one. Your ring size is less than 7.5. I want you to try to write the inequality statement that would match that scenario. All right, anybody want to raise your hand and tell me? Halen? Um, Did you just say less than or greater than? Oh, uh, less than? 
Yep. What variable did you use? Yeah, you could use R. Okay, that's the one I used. R is less than 7.5. Your ring size is less than 7.5, Mikhail. Okay. I would not. I would not. So if you do that, you have to still read the variable first, which makes it very confusing. So always, always write your variable first. That will make more sense tomorrow, okay? But for today, just write your variable first. Mikhail, if you get the graph correct, no, but as you'll see tomorrow, okay, was it still closed off towards the R when you wrote it backwards? Or did you write the sign exactly like that? Towards the R? It, it's like reading a line in your like in, in a sentence backwards from right to left like you don't want to read it backwards okay all right so the temperature is no more than negative one degrees fahrenheit does anybody want to try that one uh destiny all right so which symbol goes there greater than less than equal to what do you think Hmm? Okay, well, remember, if it's closed off towards the left, that's less than or equal to. If it's open towards the left, it's greater than or equal to. Zoe, help her out. Yes. So, Dexney, if you wrote your symbol like this, that means less than or equal to. Because it's, yeah, but you got to say it. Yeah, but no more than is what symbol. So when you read your answer, you can't say no more than. You have to say less than or equal to, okay? So that's the name of the symbol. What does no more than mean? It means less than or equal to, negative one, okay? All right, uh, now we're going to take operations, and we're going to put it into an inequality statement. We don't have to solve it, okay? It says a number plus five is less than or equal to negative seven. A number plus five is less than or equal to negative seven. All right, Mikhail, what do you think? X plus five is less than Yeah, very good, that's how you read it. Less than or equal to negative seven. Is that what you guys were thinking? Okay. A number X is at least negative 10. A number X is at least negative 10. What do you guys think, Cadence? All right, so read the whole thing. X, very good. X is greater than or equal to negative 10. Greater than or equal to. Twice a number, y, so it tells me the variable uh, to use, is more than negative 5 over 2. Okay, so how do I write twice a number? Two, y, two. Yep, times 2. So 2y two is more than negative 5 over 2. Okay, it's just a fraction. I guess when I changed the, the slide design, it made my fraction look weird. All right, any questions so far? Just writing inequalities, okay? Now let's test solutions, okay? So the solution of an inequality makes that inequality true, all right? Now, there's more than one solution. There's more than one value. Just like when I just asked you, what are the appropriate ages to drive a vehicle by, its, by yourself? Didn't you guys give me more than one age? Could be 18, could be 25, could be 30, right? Could be 100. So a solution is just a value that makes the inequality true. So all I'm doing here, you have a couple homework problems like this. All I'm doing here is I'm taking the value and I'm plugging it in for the variable, okay? So I'm gonna say negative two minus five 
is greater than or equal to negative 6. All you do is just put it where the variable was in the inequality. Now you're going to simplify that. What is negative 2 minus 5? What is it? It is negative 7. Is this a true statement that negative 7 is greater than or equal to negative 6? Is that true? Is negative 7 greater than, greater than, guys, think negatives? No, it is not. So because your answer is no, here's what you're saying. Negative 2 is not a solution. You need to write that. It tells me that you understand what you were doing here. You were testing to see if you plug in negative 2, will it make the inequality true? It did not. Negative 7 is not greater than negative 6. All right, try it on the next one. Try it on the next one. Tell whether negative 2 is a solution of negative 5.5y is less than 14. So do I subtract them? Do I subtract them, guys? No, that's multiplication. All right, did you use your mental math trick? Use your mental math trick, guys. What is 5 times 2? 10. What is half of 2? 1. What is 10 plus 1? 11. Okay, now is it positive 11 or negative 11? It is positive, but you say, well, Miss Kinder, if I had said negative 11, it still makes it true. But are you correct? No, because it needs to be 11 is less than 14. And so my answer is yes, 2 is a solution. Again, you must confirm what you did here. Just to say yes doesn't really tell me that you knew what you were doing. You're testing to see if two, the value 2, when you plug it in, if it makes the inequality true. Oh, All so right? Y is negative so why is what? So the number y, that would be negative 2. So why, yeah, so I plugged in negative 2 for y, okay? I could plug in whatever number I want for y. All I'm doing is saying, okay, if I plug in this number, would it make it true? That's all I'm saying. So you can literally plug in any number you want. They just gave us negative 2, okay? And on your homework, they'll give you different values too. Okay, so now let's graph. All right, now we'll talk about the open dot and closed dot in a second. It says a rock climber's sleeping bag is recommended for temperatures no less than negative 15 degrees Celsius. Write and graph an inequality that represents this scenario. All right, you guys want to convert that? <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to. That was on the lesson yesterday. You gotta, gotta go back and watch that if you haven't already. Did you watch it? You did watch it. All right, awesome. Great job. Okay, so how could I write temperatures no less than negative 15 degrees Celsius. How could I write that inequality? Go ahead and write it down. Write it down in your notes. How would I write that inequality? All right, Michael, what do you think? How would you write it? Temperatures no less than negative 15 degrees Celsius. Very good. The temperatures, what now? You can use any letter. You can use X or whatever floats your boat. Okay. All right. So T 
is basically your temperatures have to be greater than negative 15 in order for the sleeping bag to be effective. Otherwise, you're going to get frostbite or something. Okay, so how do I graph that? I graph it by plotting my solution or my cutoff value as the middle value on my number line. Okay, so whatever that number is, okay, that comparison value, that's my middle number. All right, now be careful what value is one unit less than negative 15, one unit farther from zero. What number? Negative 16. Okay. What value is one unit closer to zero? Negative 14. Okay. Now let's talk open and closed dot. An open dot is just less than or greater than. Okay. That's an open dot. A closed dot is less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, meaning that that value is a part of the solution, okay? So my inequality symbol tells me if it will be an open dot or a closed dot. So according to this symbol, is it open or closed? closed. It is closed. And now my arrow, if it is greater than needs to go towards the negative 14, okay? Towards the negative 14. All right, and then draw your arrow on the end, okay? So we just wanna darken up that line and draw the arrow at the end to show all numbers greater than or equal to negative 15 would make it true, okay? All right, let's do two more graphs, okay? Let's do two more graphs now. All right, so R is less than or equal to negative 9, and X is greater than 5. Okay, so what number goes in the middle, and then what number left and right, open dot or close dot, and which way does your arrow go? Go ahead and try those two. All right, so negative nine goes in the middle. What number to the left, guys? Um, negative 10. What number to the right? Negative eight. negative eight. And then open or closed eye? Closed. closed. And which way does my arrow go? Backwards or to the left. Okay. All right, open or closed dot on the five? Open. And which way does my arrow go? To the right. All right, great job on today's lesson, guys. Oh, yep.